Hey, Jonathan with Franklin and PsychoWorks here. We're just down the road from Pelotonia headquarters, and we're gonna be doing bi-weekly videos to give you some tips and tricks to make your cycling uh, more fun, safer, and just a more enjoyable experience overall. Today, we're gonna focus on bike fit, uh, proper nutrition and hydration, and uh, just a very basic thing that you can do to make sure that you're rolling smoothly and efficiently down the road. So let's start with a little bit about bike fit. Now you wanna select a bike that's a reasonable size for yourself, not something too big or too small. An easy way to begin with your bike is just stand over the top tube. You wanna be able to stand over it comfortably. Uh, actually, you wanna be able to pick up the bike just a little bit. That's gonna give you a good indication that the bike is the right size for you. If you can pick up the bike a lot, it's probably too small. If you can't barely get over that top tube, then it's probably too big. So start there. The next thing you want to think about is your seat height and seat tilt. Okay, when the pedal is in the downward stroke, you want to get pretty full leg extension here. You want your leg to be relatively straight when you're in this position. You don't want to have your knees constantly bumping up against your elbows or something like that. That means your seat is too low. Go ahead and raise your seat if your knees are constantly bent. On the other hand, your seat is too high when you're having to get on your tippy toes in order to complete the pedal stroke. That's going to end up putting strain on your Achilles tendon. So adjusting the seat height is really going to help preserve your knees and your body overall. It's going to make you much more comfortable. It's going to make you go farther and faster. A lot of people tend to ride with their seat too low, which actually uh, put strain on your knees and decreases your stability on the bike. So I encourage you to raise your seat a little bit um, and just sort of experiment with how that feels. I, I'm pretty confident you're gonna enjoy it. The other thing you wanna think about in terms of bike fit is seat tilt. So uh, the tilt of the seat can be adjusted right here, kind of at the base of the seat where it connects to the seat post. Um, there's different systems. Um, but basically you want your seat, uh, at least a good starting point is to have your seat nice and flat, just like this. If the seat is tilted up too far with the no nose pointing up into the sky, you're gonna feel like you're sliding off the seat. If the seat is tilted so that the no nose is pointing down, you're gonna feel like you're sliding forward and it's gonna put a lot more pressure on your hands. You're gonna find that your hands are going to sleep, things like that. So try to get your seat nice and flat that's a good starting point. If you find that you need to adjust it slightly from that uh, flat position, that's okay. You know, every, every rider is different, so finding what works for you is best. But go ahead and make it nice and flat for starters. As a side note, if you need help with any of this kind of stuff, check out your local bike shop. We'd love to help you here at Franklin and PsychoWorks. We're at 897 West Broad Street. Again, just down the road from Pelotonia headquarters. We'd love to help you get set up. So the other thing regarding uh, being comfortable on your bike is proper clothing, all right? So uh, there's a lot of special cyclist clothing out there. You don't necessarily need to go buy any of that stuff, uh, but it can help. Um, my rule of thumb would be wear something comfortable. Any kind of athletic clothing can really make a big difference. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be super loose fitting, but something that you feel comfortable moving in. If you do wanna take the plunge to get some cyclist specific clothing, um, something like what we've got hanging up here is really nice. Um, just a sort of bike jersey. These are very breathable materials, wicking material so that the sweat doesn't just kind of stick to your body and make the shirt all sticky and everything like that. So these cycling jerseys are really nice. This one's particularly good because it's high vis yellow. So you have the added benefit of high visibility. These is a pair of cycling shorts. Again, not essential for riders, but it can really help. Cycling shorts actually have padding built into the seat of the pants. Um, this padding just helps um, uh, you be more comfortable on long distance rides. So if you're thinking of doing the, the 50, especially the 100 mile ride, I highly encourage you to get a pair of these cycling shorts. If you're doing the 25, and this is kind of your first foray, and these seem weird to you, don't worry about it. Just wear something comfortable. Of course, 
you do want to wear a helmet. Um, helmets are just uh, a good way to avoid something unnecessary, um, an unnecessary head injury. There are lots of great helmets out there. So find one that you feel comfortable in, something lightweight, something that can breathe well. Those are, are the best so that you don't get all hot and sweaty in your helmet. And then personally, I like to ride with a cycling cap underneath my helmet. Just add some um, you know, protection from the sun there so you can see a little bit better. And again, just kind of helps uh, moderate the sweat on my head. Um, so again, helmets, necessary clothing, something comfortable, something that can wick the moisture away from your body. Now, hydration and nutrition are really important. Um, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna end up sweating, uh, especially on the Pelotonia ride later in the season. Uh, it's likely to be kind of hot out there. Um, so make sure that you stay hydrated. Bring at least one water bottle on, on every ride you do. Um, if you're going on a longer ride and you don't have a place to fill up, I, I recommend trying to get two water bottles on your bike. Most bikes do have places for two water bottle mounts. So in this case, I've only got one water bottle cage in, but you can see the space for the second water bottle mount. So have, I always recommend that people bring more water than they think they actually need. That way, if it turns out you need it, you're covered. Nutrition is also really important. Um, I've read studies that suggest the average size rider going at an average speed burns about 50 calories per mile. Um, so if you're doing the, the 25 mile ride, what is that like 1200 plus calories? Um, that's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. So bring snacks with you. Um, if you're on a supported ride, make sure that you take advantage of the snacks that are provided for you. But I always bring at least a couple cliff bars with me if I'm going on any ride over 10 miles just in case I realize that my body really needs that extra nutrition. All right, last but, for, last but not least for today is tire pressure. Keeping your tires inflated to the proper PSI is the best way to avoid flats. Um, and it's also going to ensure that you're rolling the most efficiently down the road as you possibly can. So the tires will tell you sort of a a PSI range. On the sidewall of my tire right here, it says min 40, max 65 PSI. So PSI is pounds per square inch. That's the, the tire or the air pressure um, unit of measure here. So anywhere between 40 and 65 PSI is the recommended inflation for these tires. Um, there's, depending on the kind of tire, there's gonna be different ranges there. So it always pays off to check your tires and then keep them properly inflated. When tires are too soft, it slows you down a little bit. Uh, rather than each pedal stroke going into turning this rear wheel and propelling you forward, some of that power is lost in flex in the tire. Um, it also means you're gonna have Sort of a bigger contact patch with the road especially if your front tire is real squishy it's kind of going to be bouncing biting into the road a little bit more so that's just eating into your efficiency um, the other thing is because you have a bigger contact patch on the road and because the tires are squishier you're a little more likely to catch a flat just something in the road is going to work its way into your tire whereas if your tires are properly inflated you avoid the risk of what's called a pinch flat, essentially your, your tire bottoming out on your rim, as well as uh, little bits of glass and rock puncturing your tire. So if I give one tip in terms of bike maintenance, it's keep your tires properly inflated. Until next time, um, feel free to stop into Franklin and Psych Works at your convenience. We're open on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, we'd be happy to help you with any of your bike needs or help you find a new bike. See you next time.